Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Cordemanch, and today I just want to give a rundown on my thoughts about Ian Esselman's uh, Orb Scepter Throne. Uh, this is the fourth novel in his novels of the Mals and Empire. This is a reread for me as I make my way through the whole Mals and universe here. Uh, so this is just going to be a quick little rundown of my thoughts on this novel here. Um, it's This novel is basically, essentially, a sequel to Erickson's Toll the Hounds, which was the eighth book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And, um, and you know, I kind of would like to talk about this facet of, like, I guess, uh, like world building between authors here. And what specifically what these two authors have done which is i find simply incredible and, and i don't know if there's anything quite like it out there um you know there's been shared worlds before you know certainly the glut of dnd &D novels in the late 80s and early 90s um you know really emphasize emphasize that world building aspect to their lines over all else uh but um and you know i know we had uh collaboration between robert robert Asprin and lynn abbey on the, like the thieves world stuff um and there's been you know, other, other things but um but these two guys uh they didn't rely on like any kind of model though they uh they took their world building and they went many steps further by truly integrating their works both thematically you know as well as with plot points and character building and stuff like that. Um, Esamon isn't just writing stories in this world. He's writing this world to get you the story that is there along with Erickson. And I, I would be hard-pressed to like find anything like it in any realm of literature. I mean, maybe there is. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my my depth of knowledge of literature doesn't go that far or far at all, really. But um, from what I've seen, I don't think there's anything quite like this uh, this kind of collaboration. And uh, you know, so when I say it's like a sequel to a book in a different series, it's kind of meant more as a compass point rather than a book that is traditionally considered a sequel. Um, so <laughs> with all that in mind, uh, this book takes place on the continent of uh, Genabacus or Genabacus, however you say that. Um, and it takes place both in our favorite city of Darugistan Dur and near the south end of the continent as well. Uh, many of the major events um, that are mentioned in the book uh, and uh and in some way, you know, it, it's like many of the major events from Toll the Hounds are mentioned in this book. And and in some way, you know, sometimes it's it's in a way of like conjecture or rumor. And, and sometimes it's a bit more direct. Uh, so almost like you could, if, if you've read the first eight books in the Malazan Book of the Fallen, you could actually read this right at the Toll the Hound without having first read the three books, the first three books in, in the, in the uh, novels of the Malazan Empire by Elsamon. Almost. I mean, there's, there's like one storyline that does continue from the first three books into this one. And yes, it does eventually come around to tie into everything else. Uh, so, you know, if, if you want to choose that route, it's kind of like a read to be worn type thing. But, um, but, it's uh <laughs> I just find it unique and interesting that Esselmont uh did that. Um so uh to move on, one of the many themes that Esselmont plays with is like aftermath. Like what happens when big events shake the foundations of the current order, you know? And who who rises to fill that power vacuum and who takes charge in such a situation and uh the answers he presents to us aren't always obvious 
and the speculation as to what's actually going on was really fun to consider in this in this novel um we do learn about other cultures and areas on this continent that hadn't been explored before and we learn about some cultures that we already knew about for instance like the segula and the morath uh we get a lot a lot more information about them which was really cool to find out um Esamon definitely brings many characters to life that we already felt we had a grasp on just from some of Erickson's books, but he also gives some new insight into their motives and desires, and he sometimes shows us a different side you wouldn't normally consider. Uh, so that was that was great once again. Um, another theme in the is uh, in the book is a power of empathy and how it shapes our decisions and actions um and it's like how it's how the characters in the book react empathetically with both their opponents and their allies that often determine the course of events and have consequences for good and ill and depending on you know the situation um one of the uh, like one of the defining moments happens because of certain characters' empathic insight into a situation that seemed to have no good res- resolution, uh, and so and and uh, Esamon pulls off the scene beautifully, and that and how how that happens, it's uh, really well done, and um, I got to give him kudos for that. And when I finished this book, I had this like this really beautiful sense of ca- catharsis with the culmination of all the um, thematic and like logistic plot threads. And that led to this point at the, uh, at the ending. And it was, it was, it was really well done. And like, there was plenty of violent and harrowing battle scenes in the book, but I thought Asimov did a great job of balancing that with humor. And uh, this book actually has a couple of happy endings. Um, you know, relative to Mel's and standards, at least, you know. Uh, and so, overall, I think this has probably been my favorite Esselmont book to date. And uh, I'm really glad that I read it. And I really got a lot out of this one uh, that on this reread. Uh, so, uh, if you're uh, considering, if you haven't read Esselmont's books yet, please consider doing so because uh, they get better and better as they go along. And then um, this one was just outstanding. Uh, and if, um, if you haven't, uh, if you're not, if you, if you're considering a reread of Mal's and I would highly recommend interspersing these books uh, in the publication order that they came out. And so with that being said, be good to each other. Thank you.